very hard to get off the ground, and the number one reason was me. I had, uh, it had been six years since my last film, and it was more of a exploitation horror comedy, and this was obviously something very different. And the other big factor was my actor, Megan Blair. Um, I knew him to be a, a very underutilized asset, a, a great talent that had never had a chance to be showcased in a lead role, but he happened to be my best friend. So if you take this project to a producer or a financier, um, it's, they call it, you know, red flags. Like, a, a, a director that's sort of taking his time with the second film wants to make another one with his best friend. So um, I had faith in him the entire time and making was very committed as my lead role. And the entire project was built around him. Um, and that was never going to change no matter what. So we were forced to sort of bypass traditional methods of funding and, 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 and I had to enlist a bunch of young kids who it was their first movie. Um, I attached myself to a friend and producer who had done much more prestigious work and I used his good name to get casting directors on board. And I lied to them and I told them that the film was fully funded and were greenlit and that the, uh, the crowdfunding campaign was just a, a long lead PR angle. We're going to garner support and press early on, but you know, it was totally not financed. But I knew that my best friend would be the most committed to the project and that he was perfect for the role. And I used my producer's name to sort of convince other people that the project was worthwhile. <clears throat> but we knew that Megan needed to be surrounded by a much more experienced cast. And our casting directors really got the, the material. And we only cast people um, who were very committed. And I, I shot many films as a cinematographer. And I've been on sets where you have a, a higher you know, paid or a more well-known actor. And they're considered an asset to the financiers, but on set, they're not. They are not. If they're not committed, then they do everyone a disservice, including themselves. And I watched these directors be held hostage by actors who weren't committed, or, or just you know, you know, their dreams were being just trounced upon, you know, by people who who, who really weren't invested. So I surrounded myself from a crew perspective, uh, protecting the project with people who, who needed a shot or, or were, were so great and got the material and would audition. Uh, if, if people, there was many people who wanted the role of Teddy and they were only, they would only accept an offer. They wouldn't come and read one page of dialogue. And so it, it was, a, it wasn't so much that I was, it was, it wasn't adversarial between me and them. It was just, if you can't convince me with a one page dialogue reading, then I just can't commit to you because I, I'm investing my entire net worth in the movie. This is, this is literally my career on the line. And so it ended up being only the best actors won out and those who were committed. And it was a very tough shoot. And um, not only were they able to endure physical trauma, you know, gun barrels hitting the people in the head and drawing blood, or my, you know, my lead went through, jumped through windows, jumped out of windows, smashed glass. It, it was about elevating my lead and my friend. And, and when, when he was in a room or in a scene with people with more experience, he, he, his performance was, it ended up being much more than he and I ever could have envisioned.